You know, I was just thinking recently, it's been a while since we've had a massive CPU exploit announced. And sure enough, just like last year's big giant meltdown in Spectre exploits, we've got a couple new ones, the main one being called Zombie Load, and it apparently affects all Intel CPUs going back to 2011. Now, in a similar fashion to how these Meltdown and Spectre exploits worked, the Zombie Load also uses what is called Speculative Execution. It's a feature of the CPU where it tries to predict the next bit of code that is gonna be executed, and then will load that into the CPU's cache and then if it does get loaded, it has it right there to load it really fast, but if it doesn't get loaded, it just kind of sits there waiting to be overwritten and it's said to go stale. But the zombie load exploits takes this unused data and can actually reread it, even though it's supposed to be done with. So the name kind of comes from the fact that it takes this dead unused data and resurrects it and rereads it. And it also apparently takes advantage of what are called faulting load executions. So both of these parts together kind of create the whole term zombie load it's kind of a dumb name, but that's what they decided to call it. The problem with all this, of course, is that there is all sorts of information that is gonna be used by the CPU and stored to be loaded faster, and all things have to go through the CPU if you're on the computer. So it doesn't matter how secure it is on the operating system, it has to go through the CPU. The CPU does everything, obviously. So if you can somehow get into the CPU's secret enclave, basically, and load anything you want out of it, well, you can have whatever you want, passwords, uh, secure keys, anything. And actually, as I kind of touched on before, Zombie Load is actually one of several different exploits announced today. It's part of like a family of exploits. So the others are actually called Fallout, R-I-D-L, and the Store to Leak Forwarding Exploits. And Intel is actually referring to all of these collectively as microarchitecture data sampling exploits. I think they tried to come up with the most boring name possible so that it would not sound too scary. A big question you might be having right now, obviously, is is your computer vulnerable at all? So first of all, if you have a non-Intel CPU, so if you have a PC that uses AMD, you're fine. If you have a phone that uses either Apple's CPUs like an iPhone, obviously, or a Qualcomm chip or a Samsung chip, something like that, you're totally fine. But if it is an Intel CPU, like on a desktop or something like that, then yes, it probably is definitely vulnerable if it's made in the last you know, eight years. But first of all, the good news is that most companies have been releasing patches to fix this or at least kind of work around it. And so for example, Microsoft released a Windows update, so make sure you're up to date on that. Apple also released an update for Mac with uh, Mac OS 10.14.5, so get, get up to date on that and you're fine. And then Google also released an Android security patch for phones that are running Intel CPUs, which I don't believe are very many at all, but that option is there if you have one. But the bad news is that even though these are patchable with software, at its core, this is a hardware exploit. It takes advantage of the actual CPU architecture itself. So all of these software patches kind of have to work around that. So there is going to be a CPU performance hit. They suspect that it's only gonna be like a 3% hit, but I mean, all this is gonna probably be cumulative. I mean, before we had like the uh, Meltdown Inspector patches were like a were 5% CPU hit. Now there's another one, 3% hit. So before we know it, we might be getting slower and slower CPUs. Also, like Spectre and Meltdown, because this is a hardware exploit, the only way to 100% remove that exploit is literally to just wait for the next generation of Intel CPUs for when this will presumably be fixed at the hardware level. And until then, we'll just have to settle for the software updates, which will work, it'll do the job, because obviously Microsoft and these big companies are not gonna just allow their operating systems to all be vulnerable. So they are gonna do some things, even if it does create a performance hit, That'll be the cost of being secure. Now, these operating system updates are obviously very important and very good, and you should do them, but if you want to be maximally secure with all the software patches possible, you will have to basically update the BIOS because Intel is releasing so-called microcode updates that can be installed onto motherboards. But that means that we're gonna have to wait for motherboard manufacturers to write these BIOS patches, which will take time if they end up doing it at all. For example, when there was the Meltdown Inspector exploits, Intel released microcode soon after, but my motherboard manufacturer, Asus, 
for my motherboard in particular, it took them like three months to release a patch for the BIOS. So I was just waiting and it was kind of a pain. But realistically, if you don't know how to do a BIOS update, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. It's the way to be most secure, but if you don't know how to do a BIOS update, then you're probably just gonna do more damage if you mess it up. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't even bother trying because it is a bit complicated and you do actually risk basically bricking your computer if you mess it up. The next thing we can think about is, is this exploit gonna be really a big deal realistically in the real world? And I think because most people and most average users are just gonna be updated with the patches for software, it's probably not gonna affect too many people. It's not gonna be a big effect, I think. And also apparently this exploit requires pretty significant specialized knowledge, which is probably why it was taking so long to actually be discovered. I mean, this has been around again since 2011. They only just now figured it out. So obviously now that it is out, people who know how to do it with that knowledge could do it. But I think really the main risk would be for like data centers and stuff, which still run Intel CPUs. I mean, you have cloud computers, you know, everything runs on the clouds these days pretty much, but you know, data centers like on AWS, Amazon servers, you know, Microsoft servers, they could still be affected by this, not just personal computers. And in many, many cases, you might rent a server from Amazon or whatever and be running one website off it, but it's a virtual private server, you know? It's not an actual physical box that you get all by yourself. So if someone is running this malicious code on their own kind of virtual server and it's accessing the CPU directly hardware wise, then it could theoretically spy on everything on the physical server, not just yours. So you can watch everything else on that server. That of course is a worst case scenario. But what I think is more interesting is that yet another hardware exploit was found just a year after the Meltdown Inspector ones. So this could be a whole new family and whole new field of finding exploits in computers in the hardware level. So now there's almost certainly gonna be even more people looking for hardware vulnerabilities, and I do not think this will be the last. Unfortunately, the only thing we can really do about this is kind of wait and hope that there are software patches that can fix these type of things. The worst case scenario would really be if there's some massive hardware vulnerability found that can't be patched with software and the only solution is to basically buy a new computer which would i don't even know how that would go down that's probably unlikely but it is possible we'll just have to hope that doesn't happen speaking of security if you want to check out some other videos i talk about all towards the security and privacy i'll put a couple links here that you can click on if you want to subscribe i make a couple videos a week so it should be worth it so thanks so much for watching guys i'll see you next time have a good one